Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, I'm really going to give you guys a great glimpse into my mind, into my thought processes when it comes to these fig trees. You can see we're looking at the greenhouse right now, and we've taken a lot of trees out of here. Um, if you look behind me right now, a lot of them are currently outside the greenhouse adjusting. We took about 35% of them out of here, and like I said, they're adjusting to the sunlight because eventually what the plan is to get them adjusted for the next two days, today is Wednesday, the 24th of April. We're gonna leave them here for about two days and then we're gonna move them down this little strip here a bit, get them more adjusted to the sun and then sometime around this weekend on Sunday, my buddy Chris is coming here to help us out and we're gonna be moving these guys permanently on the patio where they will stay until the end of the year. Um, but it's really important to get this adjusting process happening because a lot of these trees, and we're going to talk about this, kind of what went into this whole thing, what were the problems, what the trees look like right now. Um, but one of the big issues is that some of these trees really didn't get that much sunlight. You can really see that on some of these with the real spindly growth. It's really thin, it's really long. The distance between the nodes is quite long, so that's either a sign of high nitrogen or not enough sun. And it's definitely not the nitrogen because I haven't been feeding them. You can also see that over here on these trees. You can see the growth's real spindly. So a lot of these trees really haven't been getting that much sun. And not only are they not getting a lot of sun, because one, this area doesn't get a whole lot of sun. This is maybe only six or seven hours of light at this time of the year. It's even less once these trees finally have their, their leaves on it. It does go up a bit because once we get into June and the, the sun is much higher in the sky, it's above these trees here. And the greenhouse like it is right now is getting hit with that light. But the point is, even without the amount of light that we are getting or not getting, it's also kind of construed by this plastic. So it's not as intense with the plastic so what we want to do is adjust them, put them in a similar amount of light, similar amount of hours that is a bit more intense because now they're not being covered by that plastic. They're getting hit with the full UV rays of the sun. So this is really important. Don't overlook this process. Take your time with this. Every single year I get some sort of sun damage on my trees. And if you get too much sun damage on your trees, it could really set back your trees and all this effort that I had put in waking the trees up getting them a really early start is then going to be gone and wasted so don't do that to yourself I've done it year after year to varying degrees certainly the first year you do it is always the worst I'd even recommend if it is your first year just go ahead and do it because it's not going to be the end of the world but it is going to set back your production for the year um, so there's a couple of other things we have to do here in addition to just adjusting them. Once we put them outside, and one of the big reasons why we took them outside was because they're just really dehydrated. You can see this here on the leaves. They don't look too great. I mean, we did come in here since we've woken them up and watered them about two or three times, but it really wasn't good enough. And some of these trees I just couldn't reach that were in the back of the greenhouse. Um, some of them on the bottom, which are the ones that you see currently, these were on the bottom level. They really didn't need that water because they're being um, covered by the sun. <coughs> Excuse me, and temperatures were also a lot cooler down here. On the top, they're getting beaten down by the sun and the temperature rises, the heat rises in the greenhouse. So a lot of these guys desperately need water. You can also see uh, there's a lot of damage on these pomegranates, particularly the pomegranates take a beating every single year in here. And this is the last year that I'm going to put them in the greenhouse, I think. They just do not do well in this scenario, mainly because I can't really get in here and water them. Um, they're also quite tall. They take up a lot of space in the greenhouse. So what I'm going to do next year is we're going to cut them back to a certain height and they're all gonna go underneath the sunroom and wake up more naturally and not have to be watered as crazy as, I, as they need it in the greenhouse. And they're not gonna take this damage that you see on just about every single pomegranate. There is some sort of damage. Um, 
this one over here is probably the worst case and it's amazing that these trees don't die when this happens but pomegranates and figs are very drought tolerant and I know the limits of these trees but this is just one that I could not get to and you can see it even leafed out completely this is not a dormant tree this thing leafed out and then immediately died <laughs> and you can see it's now coming back with this new growth but these trees like I said they desperately need water there's dead growth all over here so all this dead wood needs to come out we need to cut all this out it's good for the proper care and maintenance of these trees you can also pro you know that's going to help with uh, borers or any other disease potentially that could harbor in this dead wood that really could cause you an issue down the road you know even this growth up here which is not really that important because it's not doing anything so we're going to take that out um you know cut that back to the new growth you know just just use your mind here use your brain guys and cut out all this dead wood it's it's everywhere it's all over the place it's unnecessary it's ugly it doesn't help out the tree in any form and this is just a, the tree's natural thing that it does where if nothing if there's no bud above this growth then the growth that is existing here is going to die if the tree is not going to care for it anymore it's not going to dedicate any energy so this growth who has no buds on it no actively growing buds is gone and this is really going to help also get that water that's going to slide down off the branch it's probably not going to create any rot or if it does create rot it'll be very minimal you can see that rot and what that looks like down in here my buddy dom had asked me about this the other day and this is just something you got to deal with fig trees create this kind of thing all the time and as long as you cut that growth back to a certain point you can see it here if you just cut this back to a certain point you're going to lessen the issue okay and just cut it back to whatever is living shave it down sometimes you can't even use your pruning shears you're going to have to use a knife um, or a saw so you know use your brain with this stuff for sure um, but it's just a careful little thing that i like to do it's also not even truly really that necessary but if you want to clean them up you want them to look nice this is the things that i like to do um, also once we have watered them because that's really important before we do that, we need to take off all the mulch. And here in my climate, because it's so cold, because May really isn't that that warm, even April historically really is not that warm. It's amazing that they're out of the greenhouse so soon. But um, we need to make sure that we're getting off this mulch. This mulch is really cooling the soil temperatures down in the pots. I'm gonna put it all in this bucket here, all in this pot. And this is really important because we're going to come back in here at a later date and we're going to put that um, put that mulch back on. So save the mulch, don't get rid of it. Put it somewhere and then we can put it back on sometime around June when uh, we're really caring for these trees and really want to conserve that water. Things are really warm. Uh, we don't want to be watering our trees more than we have to. Mulch is really, really important, I think, for, for uh, regulating the soil moisture and also improving the fruit quality. It really does. Uh, so that's another thing we need to do. Uh, we're going to prune out all the dead wood. Also, we need to fertilize every single tree here. I'm going to do this all today. We're going to remove all the mulch. I'm going to water every single tree, and I'm going to fertilize every single tree. That's the, day, that's the whole goal of today. Um, if I can get all this done after this video, it'll be a successful day. Um, that fertilizer really is going to pay off. A lot of these trees really need some food right now for certain. And uh, it's just, you know, do I really need to explain fertilizer? So get in there with something that is going to act fast. You know, get in there with a, um, a fast release fertilizer that's water soluble, that's inorganic. You could also use an organic fast release fertilizer. I know that there's a. Um, the fish stuff from from Alaska, you can get that stuff at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's the Alaskan fish fertilizer. All this stuff works really well, but it's important that you put it down now. Put it down as soon as humanly possible. Um, we also need to do something where we need to stake up a lot of this growth because you can see here on this limb, this thing is all the way just falling down in the weirdest way. And I've seen 
videos i've seen pictures of people's trees that just look horrendous these are supposed to be ornamental trees i mean yeah they fruit for us they are fruit trees but add some damn beauty take care of your trees man make these things look the way that they're supposed to be looking and they look like a damn mess right now i'm not gonna lie but all we have to do to make this look better is get some or get ourselves some tree tube we could even stake this up just wrap a nice little rubber band around this branch here and this branch over here and that will help support each other and get that form back that we really want is having this main trunk here it branches out to a y structure keep that y structure you guys want to keep coming back to that every year this important permanent structure is very important for fruiting and if we have just one of the scaffolds here off down on the side it's not going to look good it's not going to perform well so just take my advice on that one and take care of your trees here we also need to come in here and decide which of these trees should stay in the greenhouse uh, because we're only going to move about 35% of them onto the patio on Sunday. That's really important is to evaluate every single tree. Look at every single tree. Look at them very closely too. Don't just look, you know, back here. Look way up in here and see what's going on here. Is there any scale? Is there any insects? Is there any uh, problems with the tree? What don't you like about it? You know? look also in here and look for the buds see if we can pinch this if we can pinch this it very well may be worth pinching because we can come in here if we can pinch this thing we can get ourselves believe it or not today's only april 24th man we can get these fruits to ripen by august 1st which is incredible which is really what the whole goal of this greenhouse is is to get these late varieties that normally would fruit or maybe not even fruit at all in my climate, get them to fruit sometime in early August so that by September 15th, when our rains come in, they've already fruited or most of their crop is already done, right? So that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, assess these trees, figure out how strong they are, where they're at. The weaker trees, the ones that need a bit more help, we're gonna put them in back in the greenhouse in an environment that's a bit more controlled, there's less wind, um, and also it's just really warm in here. Not too warm, but just warm enough to get these trees really growing so that we can get these trees kick-started enough so that we can come in here and pinch these branches. So I think that's also prior that's another huge priority. A big other priority here is to come in here and thin out some of this growth. We've talked about thinning. We talked about why thinning is so important for our fig trees. It's immensely important early in the season, really before these trees start to put out a whole lot of growth. If you've already got growth like this, you probably don't want to be thinning it. If you got growth like this, this could certainly be something that I just take off. But however, if it's just enough growth to where these leaves are actually doing quite a bit for the current state of the tree, then just come in here and pinch this growth right you don't have to be taking off the entire branch this branch is probably not going to do a whole lot for us so why let it continue to grow it may even fruit for us it may even put out a couple figlets on that little branch you never know um, but that's going to stop the growth in the places that we don't want the growth and continue the growth in the places that we do so thinning pinching all really really important Again, here's another branch back in here that is dead. We're gonna cut this back. You can see this bud is actually considering gonna grow and I may even keep that. I'm not sure, we'll have to evaluate where this tree is at. Once we've got everything on the patio, um, even I'm gonna come in here with the horticultural oil and spray these trees. We're gonna spray all of them with the horticultural oil. It's gonna really kill any overwintering pests, perhaps even uh, help with mites, you never know. But there is a definitely an issue with scale in a lot of these trees. They love to hide in the little nooks and crannies of our trees. We also need to come in here and see these little graft unions here that we put on last year. These have taken, they've been on here for an entire year. We originally had a rubber band around them. That was the support that they got. Once the rubber band deteriorated or enough time had passed, we put on ourselves some tree tube 
This is the tree tube that I really like to use to help stake our trees, to help support our trees. But this stuff is indeed gonna girdle the tree. It's already beginning that process here. So we need to take this whole thing off, clean up the graft union because in the graft union is certainly a place where scale can hide. It's also something that we really, really just need to get into and do. So that's kind of the list of things. That's really it, I believe, of all the things that we need to do. Some of these trees will be planted in the ground. Some of them will be used as rootstock, believe it or not. You can see this guy down here is really struggling. It's barely put out any growth. The growth up here is sort of dead. We need to get rid of all these suckers as well. So any sucker that is here from rootstock, it's a bad idea to keep that around. I also want to show you some Brava. This is Plint Nero back in here. I truly believe this one is going to be a San Pedro type. You can see back here, well, we can pinch this right now. We can induce the fruits again like we did last year at a very early point and get ourselves some early fruits off of this. But I really believe that Plint Nero is going to be probably a San Pedro. A lot of the Italian varieties are. You can also see down here, here's another great Brava producer. This is Raven de Calci and it's pretty incredible actually. I didn't think this one put out many Brava. It's a pretty similar tree to Black Madeira, but the fruit tastes similar, but the, the fruit actually looks quite different. And it's certainly not Black Madeira, but it does come from France, a very tasty variety. It's cool to see that it's putting out Brava. A lot of these Bravas, by the way, that I'm showing you, have been formed sometime in March. <laughs> sometime in early, in, uh, in mid-March when these trees woke up. Maybe even before mid-March with some of these varieties. So I'm gonna get these fruits really early. Uh, a really early Brava Cop. It's probably sometime in June. And I don't really think that's out of the question because if they're working up about March 15th and they're putting on Brava, um, that's about 90 days from March 15th. That would put us at June 15th. So we are looking at potential for fruits very early in the season. Here's another one here called St. Martin that has put out about seven Brava. This one we're gonna put in the ground. We're also putting this tree in the ground. This is my Black Madeira KK. You can see it's quite old. We actually have a few trees of this that we're gonna be selling on FigBid very, very soon. We're also putting in the ground uh, Sobon Blue Green from Harvey. This is what I believe to be Noir de Malone. And if it is Noir de Malone, we're gonna compare it because we have Noir de Malone. We're gonna put them both in the same hole in the ground, the same hole, and that way we can directly compare them and see which of them survives, see if there's any differences between Noir de Malone and this one here. If they are indeed the same, if they're very, very similar, which you could probably say that they are the same at that point, what different adaptations does each tree have? Because there is some minor adaptations, I'm sure, at that point if indeed they are the same. Um, also these pomegranates, we really, again, I think we talked about this, we're not gonna put them in the greenhouse again, but I am gonna make sure that we get them on the, on the patio, really help them get adjusted. Excuse the wind here, guys. And you can see how windy this is, which is actually pretty good for these trees. Even though this growth is real spindly, really long, this is gonna help lignify that growth quite a bit. But going back to the pomegranates, we are going to put them on the patio, get them adjusted, get them as healthy as I can. And then if they do flower, which at this point, because they've gotten such a bad start to the season, it may not happen for them. But if they do flower, we will actually self-pollinate them this year. We will try to get them um, do that ourselves and not rely on the bees because I think last year, we had male flowers, we had very few female flowers, but um, we didn't really get any fruit set at all. So we need to come in here and help pollinate these things um, because they're just such a foreign thing that I don't know if the bees really know what to do. <laughs> so, um, you know, who knows if that's true, but we're gonna certainly help that process out. We also have main crop that has actually been forming. And this is just naturally main crop that has formed. I didn't do anything to these trees, uh, they have done it themselves. And this is called bolting. And, or at least what I, that's what I call it, is bolting. Where if you give these trees enough heat, 
and the heat's strong enough, they will actually form main crop without any assistance from pinching. And this will happen with you guys in warmer climates just naturally. You don't have to do anything. Um, eventually this will happen, but certainly in my climate, without some sort of really high heat, if it's not like July and the heat's blasting, um, we need to be pinching our trees. And you can see this variety back in here, which actually it looks like the tip is gone, but it did form main crop, I think, by itself. This is uh, a variety here called Fico Nita. That one's from Italy as well. You can see here some more Breba. What variety is this? This is, I think, Red Libya. No, this is Sucrete. Sucrete actually, I think is gonna be really tasty this year. It was tasty last year, but it ripened in a lot of rain. We're gonna give it one more year to see if it can hold up to the rain. But it's a very tasty fig. Not very many acnes, which are the female flower parts in the tree, in the fruit. This is uh, Brajoto Bianco. You can see here's two Breba. That's really good to see. And look at the amount of growth on this one here. This is another Brajoto Bianco, or no, this is Paradiso from Bode. So we'll see. You can very obviously tell though already that these trees are getting a, a crazy head start. This is Paradiso as well, another different Paradiso. This one put out some Breva this year. We're gonna have an incredible year. It's, it's pretty much guaranteed at this point um, off of these trees. If I don't really royally screw up somehow, which is pretty difficult, I think uh, these guys are gonna do incredible. This here is Sandrosa that put out a ton of growth as well. And you can see we pinched it about 10 days ago. There's the tip missing and now it's putting out fruits. Very small pea-sized fruits that will form and actually become quite large very quickly. And we pinched only this branch here. But if I look around, there may even be fruits forming, yeah. There's probably fruits forming among the whole tree. And then again, this needs to be staked up, trellised up. Another big Breva producer is LSU Scott's Black. I count one, two, three, four, five, six, six Breva off of this tree. It's a pretty mature tree, by the way. I've had this thing, I think, for four years now, at least. And, um,. It's put out so many growth points. This is the really prime example of what we need to do and, and why we need to evaluate and why we need to select certain branches. So this, this branch right here, we don't want this to grow. We're gonna take that off and really figure out how many branches on this thing here that we wanna keep. We already have one, two, three, four, just on this one branch. <laughs> so then we need to go to this one. Well, there's, six of them right there. So we need to make sure that we're getting thick and strong growth here on this last branch because there's three main branches. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight growth points. Now obviously it's kind of stopped naturally growing on certain growth points, but we want to make sure that we're letting this one here, the most vigorous one, looks also be to be quite healthy. That's gonna put out the most fruit. It's also really good for the shape of the tree. We're gonna keep this one and kind of suppress and pinch the growth of the others. I'm not gonna take off any of that growth, probably because it's too far advanced at this point. But maybe something like this, which is being really heavily shaded, we could take this whole thing off. So that's only really two small leaves. We can clean, kind of clean this up here. You can see there's more down there. We'll take that off. Even down here, these branches really are just not doing anything. And the leaves inevitably will get shaded out and not really give much benefit to the tree at all. Um, what else can I show you guys? Uh, if it is a rootstock, we do really want to pay attention this year. I mentioned this in a prior video. Maybe it's come out right now. I'm not entirely sure. But there are some varieties like the ones in the greenhouse we were just looking at that we do want to use as rootstock. And because they were going to be used as rootstock, we should have put them underneath the sunroom because we want them to be kind of at this stage here. 
this is the stage that there really isn't too much growth just yet. The sap flow is just enough so that we can really be grafting onto these varieties. The issue with the trees I just showed you guys is that the sap flow is probably too much and it's probably not a good idea to be grafting onto those because there's so much sap flow. Um, so what I've been thinking though is that because everything, even the trees that are underneath the sunroom, have been getting such a good head start, I really want to consider just leaving on this growth. This is a variety here I was considering grafting onto. Same thing with this guy here, Dr. Gawadi. Because the growth is so vigorous and so strong at this point in the season, I'm considering just not grafting. Trying to get as many grafts onto specific trees that I can and just leaving alone certain trees to get most the most production I can. And certainly with the trees that have been in the greenhouse, the production will be very high. So if I leave these guys alone and don't graft onto them, the fruit set that I'm gonna get is much higher than it would be if I just graft onto them. So we're gonna be very careful and kind of evaluate and figure out which ones of these we want to graft onto. You can also see there is just some rootstock that it doesn't exist anymore. There's no variety on it. So um, if there's no variety on it, we can actually take this rootstock out of here, put some other pots in there that are one gallon size pots and kind of restart that whole process or we could reuse that rootstock and graft onto it. Um, I want to show you guys the one gallon trees I'm talking about. These are a lot of the trees that we're going to be selling in the next week or two, really all throughout the summer, so that we could take one of these trees out of here, out of this pot, something that I want to keep, maybe I want to have more copies of it, take it out of here and put it in that 15 gallon size pot and that will grow a really strong tree and that will fill up that little gap that we had kind of just recognized. Um, so I think that's mostly it guys. That's mostly what I wanted to talk to you all about. These are really all the thought processes and all the things that I am kind of going to go through today. And I hope this really helps out a lot of you guys. Um, you know, it'd be nice if I could come in here and take you along for hours and talk about just about every single thing I do along the way. But I think you guys kind of get the gist of it now. Um, I don't think I mentioned this, maybe I did. All the weaker trees are gonna go in here. So if they need more growth, we'll put them in here. The stronger trees will come out of here and get them adjusted. This is just out here. These trees in particular are out here um, mostly because we're just uh, trying to get some room at it out of this greenhouse. You know, I just took all the trees out and that was it. So I'm looking at these trees for the first time myself for the most part. Um, I want to mention, I guess, that this is just a lot of growth. And, you know, I'm not complaining at all. I'm just stating a fact that at every single node here, this is a potential for a fig. So the more growth we can get, better head start that these trees have gotten, better off we'll be in terms of fruit set. Um, which is really, really why these things have been in here and why I'm so excited for this upcoming season. Every single tree in here is just doing phenomenal. I mean, some of them look like they have some damage, obviously, on the leaves. Some of them have spindly growth, but inevitably, they're way better off than some of the trees, most of the trees on the patio. Here's another Brava here. What variety is this? This is GM125 from Georgie's collection. I don't think I've tasted that one yet, so that'll be cool. Um, I've also never tasted the Martinenka variety back in here, which I think we mentioned, but this is some Breva on Martinenka. There's three I'm counting on this branch, and then one on this branch, so four total. Yeah, I think we talked about this. This is Col de Dom Grease back in there. Not as many Breva as I had originally thought. So this is the place that we're gonna be planting our rootstock. This is the place that it's gonna have um, three different types of capra figs 
on that rootstock that is then going to grow in this greenhouse and live in this greenhouse to colonize the blastophaga, colonize the fig wasp. And what we'll have to do is tie these branches um, once the tree gets larger and we put these trees in here again in the winter time, in the fall we will just tie these branches very simply to this wooden pole here. And then this will kind of act as a nice little trellis for them and something that we can kind of keep them out of the way. That way we're not taking up too much room in the greenhouse because of the capper fig, um, but also giving the capper fig enough room to grow to then also fruit continuously. Uh, we can have profici throughout the year and then I put that profici among the trees on the patio when the time comes. And this could be potentially a really great idea for those of you guys who are trying to do this. We don't know if it is indeed gonna work 100%, but the fig wasp has been proven to survive in scientific studies somewhere around 10, 12 degrees Fahrenheit the fig wasp will survive and continue the colonization process year after year. So if you live in zone eight, a warmer zone eight, I would certainly consider getting yourself some capper figs, making a friend with somebody in California and getting some capper figs, some profici sent to you that you can then colonize your capper figs with. Plant many capper figs all throughout the yard, even miles away if you can, or half a mile away get them in the area, kind of gorilla plant them, and that's how you're gonna colonize the wasp. So that if for whatever reason, one of your capper figs gets too cold, maybe there's some in the area that will continue that process for you. It's not gonna be easy, that's for sure, but it can be done. Um, especially in a greenhouse setting like this, I think it could certainly work to our benefit. But anyway, guys, that is the video here. If you made it this far, I certainly appreciate it. Um, definitely consider, if you made it this far, supporting me on Patreon. Even a dollar a month is really something compared to watching my videos every day. Um, also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All kinds of different content over there. I'm sure a lot of you guys watching already following me there. But just thought I'd mention it. Also, check out the new blog post, the new website, rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. This is the kind of thing that we talk about on the blog, is labeling out just all the steps and all the thought processes that I go through. And we'll put a lot of that things, those things on the blog. So check that out, guys. We'll catch you for tomorrow's video, all right? Take care.